Welcome back everyone to an Ultimate Iron Man series video. It's been over a year since my last Ultimate Iron Man video and you will notice that I added Day 89 and Day 90 to this Ultimate Iron Man video. And the reason why I did that is because I'm going to delete the other video because it was only 3 minutes long and pretty much all I did was got my cooking level to 60 to 67 and this is how I did it. When I logged back on my Ultimate Iron Man, I knew that I had money in the Nightmare Zone, so that's why I went there to get the money out. I also was thinking about just High Elk in my Torx plate body. The reason why I did this is because it's going to cost me 270 k to repair. As you can see in my inventory, I don't even have that. And I can always go back to Barrels and try get it back. But for now, we're just going to stick with the Rune Armor, and if I feel like I want to get better armor, I will go back to Barrels and try get better armor. Maybe I'll camp there until I get a full set of barrels. Not exactly a full set of barrels of Torex, but uh, mix it up a little bit. Maybe Torex plate body with a Guthans chain skirt. I think that would look kind of funny, but you know, something like that. Anyways, I thought I was able to start the recipe for disaster, go right ahead and kill the Colonera Mancer right away, but I totally forgot about the Desert Treasure quest. I needed 50 fire making but I also needed to get something else I will explain that to you guys in a bit but I got my 50 fire making and the other thing that I needed for the quest was magic logs I was thinking to myself I was like do I have to get 75 magic or sorry 75 wood cutting to get magic logs or should I get 58 hunter for nature athletes I was trying to think to myself which would be faster knowing me I don't really like hunter which is why it's like one right now and uh, wood cutting I find is kind of AFKable, not really. It could be AFKable if you were to cut willow logs, uh, but for me I just stayed at the teak logs and I ended up cut wood cutting there. Where I went to cut teak logs was at the teak tree just southwest of Castle Wars. Um, that's the best I can describe the location. You can always just look it up too if you want for those Iron Man accounts out there. Here I got a clue nest elite. I also got a, a heart clue from a bird's nest too, but I didn't have time to record. And uh, here I am going to get 70 wood cutting, I believe, or 72. We already got 70 wood cutting. The reason why I got 72 wood cutting is just to increase my chances of getting 75 wood cutting with spicy stews. Spicy stews will either boost your wood cutting level or it would decrease it. Not always by 5 though. Sometimes it would only boost it up by 3, sometimes 4, and even 2. So now I don't want you guys to think that you have to get 72 wood cutting. I already told you guys why I got it, just to increase my chances of getting that boost that I need for magic logs. And uh, it took quite some time to get the 12 magic logs. I'm going to be honest with you guys, you know, I didn't get it in one go. You know, I had to make, I don't know how many spicy stews that I had to make. But um, there were quite a bit of trips that I had to go to Clan Wars to restore my stats back to normal. Because if I my wood cutting got decreased by that spicy stew, I would teleport to Clan Wars to restore it. That was my method. Um, if you have, I think a stat restore potion helps restore your wood cutting. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong though and um, yeah that's how I did everything I just kill howl rats with my cat uh, in evil days uh, basement nowhere else to kill them and I would cut brown spice three doses because that's really the only maximum doses you can use in a stew and uh, it's all about luck too guys you gotta keep that in mind you guys will notice in this progress video I do uh, celebrate little achievements I was pretty happy when I got my tall magic logs, so I took them to the, this guy because this guy needs them. And uh, once I gave him the magic logs, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm done. But then the guy wanted some more items, six steel bars, molten glass, six of them. And he also wanted one bones, one ashes, charcoal, and blood rune. I thought the four other items, the one items that is the bones and stuff were easy to get. But the sti six steel bars, I had to, you know, go mine some coal, iron ore. And the molten glass, not very hard to get. Uh, just go to Charter and you can get the sand, bucket of sand and soda ash and make them at a furnace. But I think you need a glass blowing pipe in your inventory. I had one in my inventory. 
out of all the diamonds, guys, you know, the ice diamond, the shadow diamond, the smoke diamond, and the blood diamond, I felt the ice diamond was the hardest to get and the most annoying one to get for ultimate Iron Man accounts, that is. Now, the reason why I felt this way is because, well, you're in an icy place and it, it uh, decreases your stats. I had no freaking stat restore potions on me and I had no prayer potions. I had to kill five trolls to get to the boss. And let me tell you, killing those five trolls took quite some time. It took a lot of food, it took like three teleports out of there. I had to teleport to the Warriors Guild to get more food, come back, and kill one more troll or two more trolls. When I got the Ice Diamond, I went AFK. I thought I was safe, you know, I got teleported out of there with those trolls. I came back, I was logged out, I was thinking, okay, uh, just log back in, I'll be near the trolls. But I was in Felidor instead with 9 HP, my ring of life gone. I don't know what was hitting me. I think I have one idea, but I could be wrong because he does spawn later on when I'm in the quest. And I think it was the stranger, the level 95 stranger. I think maybe he spawned next to me when I was AFK and he almost killed me. So luckily I had that ring of life on. There's my other little celebration of completing the Entrano run. I had to do the Entrano run because I had to get my silver pot blessed to fight this guy. And this guy wasn't very hard to kill. I just used straight up melee against him and um, like I said he's not very hard to kill. There's that level 95 stranger. This time I was present so uh, he was no match for me. I was able to kill him at ease. Now on to the smoke diamond. I came here thinking, okay, uh, this guy's gonna be easy, I could just stand here, kill him with some water blasts going, but he kept unequipping my s s uh, air staff. I thought, okay, maybe it's because it's the one space that I have in my inventory, and when I took my dragon defender off to make it 20, or make my inventory full, he still would knock it off out of my hand, and my air staff would go on the ground. So I started just, you know, hit and run using that hit and run strategy that I like to use on my ultimate Iron Man account when it comes to fighting bosses. So I would hit him, run away, hit him, run away, and I do exactly the same thing here guys. Uh, when he's in his second form, uh, what the heck is his name, I can't quite catch it, it's going so damn fast, but you guys know who I'm talking about. Uh, you can see I'm out of prayer, po out of prayer points, yes, I had no prayer potions on me, I had my uh, super restore potion, but I ended up using that all. I ended up killing him using that hit and run strategy. And finally, I complete the Desert Treasure quest. You guys, this quest, getting the requirements, getting those 12 magic logs, exhausting. This is why I titled this video, Exhausting Progress. Not only did I complete Desert Treasure, but I also complete something else. A long-term goal that I had on this account for so long that I always talked about in my videos. Recipe for Disaster. Now I can finally start killing these bosses, these battles, there's five battles total, or six if you count the Culinary Master, but really there's five battles, Culinary Master is a freaking easy boss, you know, he's uh, very easy to kill, and I'll show you guys that in um, just a moment. My strategy for the first boss, just range him out, you know, I was using a melee at the start there, but I found that I wasn't really hitting him, so I switched to my melee gear or my range gear, gear <laughs> and I killed him. And now for the second boss, this is the strategy right here guys. What you want to do is get him stuck in his spawn. Where he's standing exactly, that's where, that's the spawn you want him to be. So if he doesn't spawn there, just exit the portal if you want to safe spot him, that is. In the third battle, uh, my strategy was pretty much everyone else's strategy is to use the firebolt spell because she likes to reduce her stats and you also want to have some stat restore potions in your inventory. The reason why I fire both spell is because it, it requires 35 magic to use and when she's reducing your stats uh, you don't necessarily have to start drinking your stat restore potion uh, because you still have those magic levels but if it goes below 35 then you drink a stat restore potion. Now the fourth battle I th honestly thought I had enough food to fight this guy I thought I would try and kill him but it was the other way around, he almost killed me and I had to retreat, get more food at the Warriors Guild. You might notice that I have pizzas, I made these just in the Lumbridge basement. 
Same strategy as the third battle, or the third boss, if you will. I uh, use Firebolt's spell on him, and uh, he's pretty weak to that too, I notice. Now, the fifth battle, uh, it's almost like the Dagoneth Mother. Actually, it is like the Dagoneth Mother in the quest, Horror from the Deep quest. Um, if the Dagoneth is white, uh, use Air Strike, or not Air Strike, but Air Attack. And then if it's uh, orange, that means melee. If it's blue, water. If it looks almost black, it, uh, it's actually a dark brown um, earth spell. And then if it's red, uh, fire spell. I thought I would go ahead and try to kill the Colin Aramancer with my same inventory after I killed the Dagoneth person there. And uh, like I said, the Colin Aramancer guy was easy to kill. I used Millie to kill him. And um, he barely did anything to me except hit a 25. And that was it. I spent my 20k XP lamp on Slayer because I have plans on training my Slayer again. I'm going to start training that actually, I think. It's either Slayer or Hunter right now because the reason why that is is because when I looked, was looking at my guy here, I was thinking, oh man, that power amulet on me looks ugly. And not only ugly, it just makes my guy, it doesn't look completed yet. Uh, my ultimate Iron Man isn't quite completed. It's not quite where I want it to be. Uh, now that I have those barrels gloves, I need to upgrade that amulet. Now, to get the glory amulet, I'm going to have to either train my hunter to 83, or get my crafting level to 80. As we all know, crafting can be boring, to me anyways. Hunter also could be boring, but to you guys, you might, might find it pretty entertaining. So I think I'm going to go with hunter. So uh, before I go to slayer, I'm going to start training my hunter. But that's it for this progress video guys, thank you for watching, as always, talk to you later, and bye.